All right, picture yourself this for a quick second. You're a pro Valorant player, and you're competing in the Ascension tournament, a tournament in which the best Tier 2 teams from all over your respective region come together, and they decide who amongst that uh, group will be able to step foot into the big leagues Tier 1 in the next year's uh, partner league, whether it is EMEA, Pacific War Americas, and even China. You're deep in contention towards moving on to the playoffs, and you're actually close to making that happen. But unfortunately, some unforeseen, some unforeseen circumstances happen that just kind of steals that dream away. And unfortunately, that is what happened uh, a few days ago in said competition for EMEA. Of course, I'm talking about Job Life, um, the team that was representing France um, for this competition. All right, now looking into the match itself, we got Job Life against Mouse um and third map of haven at the very end of both teams' group stage run in said competition job life was ahead at 10 to 4 uh, at the beginning of the second half of said map mouse ended up winning nine straight rounds including what you're about to see right now to win the the match uh defeat job life hand job life their ticket back home and send them out of the tournament entirely the lockdown. If there was a time to be a hero for Job Life, it would be now. Yaz, the young gun, supported by oh. Mike Magic. It will not happen. Mena will have their chance in playoffs to go up against the best of the best in Tier 2. Job so as the commentator said, uh, Job Life's elimination uh, and subsequent loss to Mouse opened the doors for another team to move on to the playoffs of said competition. That team ultimately ended up being the ultimates representing MENA, Middle East, North Africa. Um, despite both teams being tied on a few uh, uh, things, that including overall record and map uh, differential, the main uh, reason why Ultimates was able to come out on top of Job Life was just round differential, you know, what have you. Uh, despite them not winning more rounds overall over job life and despite uh them losing as a matter of fact to job life in day three of the group stage they are the ones moving on as for what those unforeseen circumstances that i alluded to at the at the start of the video are one of their players the, the player being the ass uh suffered plenty of dc instances dc meaning disconnected um from 410 from that 410 window all the way until the very end and for it to happen at that point of the season at such a critical point of the team's run in this competition in their bid to making vct emea 2025 outright devastating and i will point to you one clip that just best encapsulates what happened uh, to the team and how devastating it was um for the team's psyche it just kind of overall form back they're about to choose the wrong site here that killjoy magic going down the turret the alarm are offline and yaz standing still again you can't help but think he is timed out or something is not going right for him at three versus two on the retake a three-man flank though they're together at the very least that gives them the best chance the thing about that information. is, yeah, exactly, it's key. It is absolutely unlucky for it to happen to a team like Job Life. As I said, plenty of instances happen in which Yaz disconnected uh, from the game. Overall, it kind of happened collectively around 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes, which was pointed out by one of the co-owners of Job Life. And as a result, they just basically were put in a situation where um up to their knowledge of the rules that were presented ahead of this competition they needed to do a substitution and they needed to do it very quickly and so with that in mind uh one of the players for job life um asked the referee uh during the tech bosses to see if they were able to just make that happen and have one of their players or one of their other players on the bench sub in uh for yes and so i got video which was presented by the same person 
slash co-owner of Job Life, um, him being Samuel uh, Benita. Uh, he presented a video of that request being made. So here it is. Can I ask a question? Yes. If uh, the, if Yaz cannot, cannot fix the internet, can we play, can we can we sub or only we cannot sub people mid game, right? No, uh, mid game it's impossible. Okay. Just but uh, you would of course be allowed to. Um, but you're of course allowed uh, to continue as uh, five with a lagging player or as four. Okay. Okay. And so, as the referee said, it is impossible. Um, the job life weren't able to make a sub, and so they were basically forced to play four v five. That point ten seven up, all the way into the very end. This started plenty of controversy, plenty of drama, plenty of um, upheaval. You know, specifically from the job life side for obvious reasons, um, due to the fact that how their season ended in such a devastating way they wanted to remake they wanted to, to just have another opportunity to right this wrong and just be in a level playing field to their adversaries over in in mouse and so plenty of uh a work attention was done in order to raise awareness about the issue and just make it happen of course you know you see the hashtag job life remake that was presented by samuel and then kind of copy and pasted uh in the ensuing replies and i can even look at point to you towards this tweet and you can see the job life remake hashtag going semi viral sometime after the end of the uh match riot pulled up a statement and 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 then and then resulting article on their EMEA Challengers uh, Twitter account, basically saying the results of their investigation. TODR ended up being no change to the results. Um, what the referee said was true, consistent to the rule set. And as such, Job Life remained eliminated from the competition it's because of the fact that Yas was able to reconnect um, in the match and be able to play at a way in which riot saw as sufficient um no remake was to be done and the result will stay as it is and so that is a ruling that riot presented however if you've seen this tweet you'll obviously be able to scroll down and see that it was it was uh community noted and community noted said that no 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 the rule set is false this statement is not consistent as a matter of fact with the rule set that riot uh, presented for this competition and such inconsistencies was pointed out by again samuel the co-owner of job life which presented which brought up a situation that basically happened uh in that match and you see in the rule 15.5 player emergency pause. I took a screenshot of that uh, in the quoted tweet of that um, ruling. And I have it right here. Play emergency protocol. I'll read it to you right here. Teams will be granted a maximum of one pause for an emergency uh, situation. Play emergency pause per map in a match for an a maximum aggregate total of 10 minutes across the match. If a team requires more than 10 minutes of player emergency pauses, then the players using the player emergency pause will become ineligible to complete to continue play and must be substituted. And so there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Despite all of this happening, the referee said no, the team basically had to continue playing as a four and see out the rest of the rule set and so on the point of view of job life if you if you encounter that situation and then you look at the rule set and you find that the rule set that riot said goes one way is actually another way then obviously just you would not be very happy at the at the very least you know you would not be very thrilled at that and um samuel again put up a tweet um after the match and he kind of outlined um the situation that was happening um to the team 
as those as that emergency pause was going on and uh, through his words our nightmare our worst nightmare is happening we have a player disconnecting mid-round our confidence is shaking and we are panicking still we show insane resilience and we saw the boys trying to hype each other up uh the game is unplayable at this point lohan used uh tech pause to try to hype the players and call the round we end up in a 4v2 situation uh the round is very winnable and again jazz dc's mid-round um we end up losing this one yet again due to yes disconnecting this play is the one that i just showed you earlier on in the video and so as a result um as he said the team just started shutting down and just we're in a mental in which there's no way to come back and that just led to them losing as a result and i can only imagine what it must be like for the players to just go through that situation obviously i'm someone that's covering the game but from the sides i'm not a player if i was i probably would be encountering the same way the same negative um effects um in a game like that and so yeah and even on top of that there was also an inconsistency on another rule that um riot showed in its official rule set that, that they stated was uh done otherwise um and uh, in, in the match itself and so said said uh pre uh, said regarding the team's mindset prior to the mouse match according to our interpretations of the sale of the so confusing rule big uh we assumed that we needed to win only one map to get to the playoffs on the end of the our game this was also on the day of our game this was also confirmed by the organizers it was announced by the VCT EME and VCL France leagues as well. However, 10 minutes before the game started, we were told they made a mistake. And in fact, we needed to win the game to qualify. 10 minutes before the start of the actual game itself, uh, the team was already in this mindset. Okay, we needed to win one map and that's it. Uh, to go from that to this, as... Uh, uh, Samuel said it was a major shock to to them to their minds and just basically had forced them to reset mentally and just refocus on that it just points out the larger picture in regards to the effects of that this inconsistency this can bring to the entire um to the entire uh um future of valor and esports because when it comes to looking at Ascension EMEA, it's one one part uh, that affects just one team's uh, uh, continuation for their bid towards making Ascension EMEA. Ultimately, Ultimates find themselves found themselves uh, finishing fourth place, um, losing to Apex and then Pacific uh, to uh, be the first team out of playoffs, but. The effects of what happened between Mouse and Job Life, I would say, is very big, very huge. Because now you've set a president, and now you you you, you point out a way in which um, this tells teams, players, fans, coaches that just because uh, uh, there are rules in a rule set, and these are pointed out as official, right? Can just on one day just say okay hey uh we're gonna think of it of, an, of another way we're gonna say this is our rules and imagine imagine how, how that would affect the two future parties that are in this situation because this won't just affect like i would say just tier two or maybe tier three or maybe game changers this could affect tier one also because as I said, because of president, because if this happened in tier two, what makes what makes one doubt that this won't happen again in tier one? And a good point was it was was done in over on Reddit uh, by a user that was basically did an open letter regarding the the inconsistency behind Riot's following of their rules. And I'll write it, I'll read it out here. This letter is not about the ruling made in this match specifically. We understand that match replay 
significantly significantly impact the schedule and the sheer difficulty of it now that the tournament has already advanced to the playoff stage instead it's about the concerning president this example sets of course who's to say that this uh situation who's to say that this doesn't happen uh again in tier one and that um uh, let's say ascension americas this happens to a team uh on land in which they're not able to to continue and they have to use another player use another like say have a, a coach stand in well we've seen what happened with job life and and mouse and what happened with that team i mean at that point we, we might just see a round two and if riot says okay for this time we're gonna follow the rules and this time we can allow a substitute well then job life is going to look at that and say hey what the hell you guys are letting them use a substitute but what happened to us you know what the fuck is going on here and so riot just set themselves in a very precarious situation in which they said one thing and in all instances they just basically have to follow that president because if they don't then what are rules what are we doing here you know why do we have rules in which um riot is not even going to follow and teams like job life are just going to be in in, in the thick of it with no other option other than to just remain eliminated and just see their participation in the major event just fizzle out like that and so there's plenty of conversation about what happened here and what might happen in the future because of this it's very concerning and riot should definitely um uh, look into their interpretation of the rules and 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 how it must be consistent because if it's not consistent then this is just going to be the wild west and uh, who's going to give a fuck rules what does it matter